Simplify this guy. Square root of square root of 49 minus square root of 48. A fun simplification. What shall we do next? No, sorry. What shall we do first? Firstly, let's have a look at these two guys. Observe. Square root of 49 and square root of 48. Very good. Hmm. What I've noticed. Of course, you should have noticed that square root of 49 is an integer. Very good. Because 49 is a perfect square. It is 7 squared. So, square root of 49, it is 7. Then, replace it with 7. The first step will be square root of 7 minus square root of 48. We should simplify this guy. Okay, how should we simplify this? We always hope that under the square root, that means 7 minus square root of 40, 48, sorry, it can be written as a minus b all squared. We always hope that the thing under the square root can always be written as a square term. That means, because here is minus, so here should also be minus, so it's going to be a minus b all squared. After the expansion, it's going to be a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. So now, we hope that 7 minus square root of 48 can be written as a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. Then you can see, in this way, a squared plus b squared should be equal to 7, and 2 times ab should be equal to square root of 48. But in this way, square root of 48, I hope there will appear a 2 in front of the square root of 48. So now, square root of 48, I'm going to do some changement on this hmm, special number. Square root of 48. 48 can be written as 4 times 12. Then separate. It is square root of 4 times square root of 12. Because square root of 4 is 2. So it is 2 times square root of 12. Very good. Oh, sorry. I didn't write it so straight. My fault. So it can be written as square root of 7 minus 2 times square root of 12. Then then, here appears a 2. So that means it is 7 minus 2 times square root of 12 should be equal to this. So a squared plus b squared should be 7, and a times b should be square root of 12. Okay, let's find the values of a and b. Of course, we only have to solve for the positive a and positive b. If we square the both sides of this equation, of the second equation, then we will get a squared times b squared equals 12. So now, the addition of a squared and b squared is 7, and the product of them is 12. So we have to find a squared and b squared. Because we know that a and b should be positive. They should be positive. That's enough. If they're both negative, that's also okay. It's going to be b minus a. But b minus a squared has the same result as a minus b squared. So it doesn't matter. We only have to solve for positive a and positive b. So we only have to find two numbers whose addition is 7 and product is 12. It is very simple and easy. 12 can be written as 4 times 3 and 4 plus 3 is 7. Oh my god. Magic. So that means a squared should be 4, b squared should be 3. Or a squared 3, b squared is 4, that doesn't matter, okay? 
if we are only going to solve this equation, then a should be positive or negative 2. But we only have to solve for positive a. So here, a should be equal to 2. That's enough. For b, the same rule. b is square root of 3. So now, here it is. I'm going to write it here. It is equal to square root of a minus b. 2 minus square root of 3, all squared. Okay, then we know the result should be the absolute value of 2 minus square root of 3. Because we know that 2 is larger than square root of 3, so 2 minus square root of 3 it is automatically positive. So the result is 2 minus square root of 3. Did you get it? Give a thumbs up for this wonderful method. Subscribe to me. We'll see you next time.